Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mahir Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to solve April 2023 university question paper under the subject strategic financial management. Again, a very important video for all the TYBMS M6 students. This is going to be the part 3 of our video series based on solving April 2023 question paper. Okay, so there were a couple of sums which are pending to be solved. So in this video, we are going to solve those sums. Okay, question number 3A was pending, uh, which was based on merger. Okay, so I'll read the question once. It's given that Whale Limited is studying the possible acquisition of sharks by way of merger. The following data are available. They're giving you company Whale and Shark. After tax earning, but the profit after tax has been given as 1 crore 25 lakhs and 37 lakh 50 thousand. Number of equity shares are given as 10 lakh and 2 lakh 50 thousand. Market price 187.5 and 150. Now in this, uh, as per the starting, okay, whatever we read, as per that, it is given that Whale Limited is going to take over Shark Limited. Okay, Whale is going to take over Shark. Shark is our target company and Whale is our company who's going to acquire or the acquisition company. Okay, the co company who's going to acquire, going to take over. After that, we are giving you if the merger goes through by exchange of equity share and the exchange ratio is set according to the current market price. So we need to find exchange ratio by on the basis of market price. What is the new earning per share of Whale Limited? So they are asking after merger, post merger EPS, earning per share, they are asking us to find. Okay. Chalo. Now let us see how to solve this kind of sum. Okay. The very first thing we need to find is the exchange ratio as per market price of the share market price is 187.5 and 150 okay so first exchange ratio based on mps okay formula will be market price of the share of the target company who is shark who's going to be taken over upon market price of acquiring company that is whale the company who's going to take over so target ka mps is 150 and acquiring the MPS is 187.5. So 150 upon 187.5, we get 0 0.8 as the exchange ratio based on market price. Okay. So this is the very first step that has to be noted down where we found the exchange ratio. Now, after finding the exchange ratio, we need to find the uh, what do you say? Uh, 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 we need to find the new number of shares that the whale will be giving away to Shark. Okay, because they are going to acquire that company. So the formula is very simple. New number of shares is equal to nothing but the exchange ratio, which is 0 0.8 into the number of shares of the target company. Now, number of shares of target company ka number of shares were 2 lakh 50 thousand. So number of new shares is 0 0.8 into 2 lakh 50 thousand okay 2 lakh 50 came from here we multiplied we get we got the value as 2 lakhs so step number one we found the exchange ratio with the help of exchange ratio step number two we found the new number of shares so once you get the new number of shares now we can find post merger eps okay so post merger eps ka formula is npat now when we talk about npat npat year after merger post merger mein what happens ki suppose let's say we are whale limited we are going we are taken over shark limited or so whatever is npat of shark will also become of whale now okay and number of shares may we already at 10 lakh plus the new number of shares which is 2 lakhs so npat will be 1 crore 25 lakh plus 37 lakh 50000 upon 10 lakh plus 2 lakh so which comes to 1 lakh 62 5 uh, 1 crore 62 50000 upon 12 lakh which comes to 13.54 so the post merger after merger the earning per share of whale limited is 13.54 rupees per share okay the earning per share is 13.54 rupees okay this is how you had to solve the part one of the sum where they had mentioned if the merger goes through by exchange of equity share and the exchange ratio is in the according to the market price what is the new earning per share of whale limited after merger so the value would have been 30 value is 13.54 okay now second shark limited want to be sure that their earning per share is not diminished by the merger 
what exchange ratio is relevant to achieve the object and always remember whenever they give you a question where they are asking where they are telling you that uh, after merger they do not want to diminish their earning then you should always go with the original eps okay so original eps we'll have to first find so so if exchange ratio is based on eps pre merger then the post merger earnings would remain the same so if you have whenever they give you a question where they are asking you to find what will be the exchange ratio so that they should have the same earning okay or it should not diminish then always remember you have to go as per the old eps that is pre merger eps so first we need to find the uh, eps of both the companies so eps is very simple okay for whale the the formula is actually npat that is uh, net profit after tax divided by the number of shares okay npat divided by the number of shares same way for whale 25 lakh upon 10 lakh is 12.5 rupee per share and same way for shark it will be 37 lakh 50000 divided by 2 lakh 50000 which comes to 1515 rupees okay now once we have got the earning per share now we can find the exchange ratio again exchange ratio ka formula is very simple okay same it is uh, now this is we are going to find the exchange ratio as per or based on eps that is pre merger eps so it will be eps of the target company which is shark upon eps of the acquiring company which is whale so eps of shark upon eps of whale which is 15 Divided by twelve point five, so the exchange ratio will be one point two. So my final answer. So if they ask you to find want to uh, shark want to be sure that the earning per share is not diminished. So if shark doesn't want the earning to be diminished after merger, the exchange ratio should be one point two of every share of the limited. Okay. So this is how you all had to solve this particular sum where they are asked you to first find. uh the post merger eps uh, as per market met, uh, market price method and second they ask you to find uh, you know again uh, exchange ratio as per the old eps okay so this was question number 3a now the next question which was pending was question number 3b from the following information compute the amount of provision to be made in the profit and loss account of bharosa limit or bharosa bank they are giving you assets they are giving you rupees asset mein you have standard asset 50000 in lakhs sub standard asset fully secure 32500 doubtful asset mein we have doubtful for less than 1 year under that are, uh, the amount of 15750 out of which they told you realizable value of security is only 3500 doubtful for more than 1 year but less than 3 years 5250 but in the bracket they are giving you realizable value of security is only 1500 And thereafter, they give you doubtful for more than three years, which is unsecured, two thousand five hundred, and loss asset, which is one seven five zero. Now, the first step will be we'll have to first create a column which will have all the assets. So we have noted down st standard assets, substandard assets. Now, be careful here. Under doubtful asset, we have first doubtful for less than one year. Okay. Now they are giving you realizable value also, and and the the total value. So here we'll have basically breaking up as per secured and unsecured. So doubtful for less than one year will be secured, which is three thousand five hundred, and the remaining will become unsecured. Same way for doubtful for more than one year but less than three years, we have secured and unsecured. Then we'll have doubtful for more than three years and loss asset. Next column we note down the amount. So standard assets were fifty thousand. Sub standard fully secured was thirty two five hundred. Doubtful for more than one year, means secured is three thousand five hundred. So remaining fifteen seven fifty minus three thousand five hundred twelve thousand two fifty becomes unsecured. Same way for doubtful for more than one year fifteen hundred will become secured and the remaining three seven five zero is unsecured. Doubtful for more than three years two thousand five hundred loss one seven five zero. Okay. Third column is the percentage of provision that we need to remember. Okay. Now for standard asset it is always zero point four percent or forty percent you can say. Sub standard के लिए when it is fully secured it is fifteen percent. Doubtful for more less than one year secured will be twenty five. Unsecured is hundred percent. Doubtful for more than one year but less than three years. Okay, secured is forty percent. Unsecured is hundred. More than three years is always hundred and loss asset is also hundred. So after you make this, we have one last column to prepare that is called provision where we are just going to multiply the amount with the percentage. So fifty thousand into zero point four percent is two hundred. 
1750 into 100 is 2550. 1750 into 100% is 2500. 1750 into 100% is 2500. You total up and we get a total provision of 26,800 in lakhs. Okay, so these were the two sums which were pending from this question paper of April 2023. Okay, so I hope everyone have understood how to solve these both sums. For the provision percentage, you just have to remember the table in which all the provision ka percentages are given, which we have already done in a separate video. Rest after that, you just have to apply it, multiply, and get the answers. Okay. Chalo. With that, we will be ending this video here. I hope everyone have understood that. Thank you.